chair recognizes Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I've got, I'm going to do this a little bit different from the way I normally do it, and I'm, I'm going to actually give you the opportunity, Ms. Pandit and Mr. Hughes, to, to talk and to respond. I've got just a couple of questions, first of all. Mr. Hughes, following up on, on my colleagues' questions about Denver, I'm still concerned about that because it seems like it was after the fact. We got lucky there. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, we got, so why aren't we doing more of that now? Why, why is it that that we were there after the fact, after they had already been on the plane and after we got them back. I mean, that seems like the logical thing of what we should be doing. Yes, I, there's an easy answer for that. There, um, like the gentlewoman said, there is a handful of people in the federal government working on CV, and there's a shoestring budget without a shoe or a string. Uh, you literally uh, couldn't be able to, to cover the, the number of places you want to go to, which is why the White House did a pilot program which they did trial and error, and they've, they've done enough error and enough trial to figure out what makes sense for the next type of wave on it. Okay, before I, before I get to Ms. Pandit, I want to ask you one more thing. It's my understanding that, that specifically with, with one of the very, one of the, the many, one of the many violent groups that we have out there, when we talk about ISIS, mm -hmm. That, that one of the things that we've been doing to counteract them as far as the social media is concerned is that we've had kind of a tit-for-tat approach with, with, the, with the tweets. Is that working? So I will defer to my, my colleague from uh, the State Department on the international side. On the domestic side, uh, I think there's a lot more we could be doing. Um, so right now you have a State Department uh, CSCC program that's doing kind of think again, turn away, counter-narrative programs. And they've had their ebbs and flows on success on that. On the domestic context, when we talk about uh, Americans who are watching this stuff online, there's at least two things the U.S. government can do tomorrow to figure this out. Uh, first thing is they need to give community partners the left and lat right latitude of what they can do online. So if you're an imam from Pittsburgh and you want to do counter-messaging online to a bunch of kids on ISIS, you're not going to because you're terrified you're going to end up on a watch list. So we need to tell them what the right and left latitudes are, what's acceptable to do online that you won't run against your local FBI office. That's a, the first kind of easy thing you could do, a two to three page type of legal guidance for communities on that. And the second thing we can do, and, and Farrah will talk about this, I think, is about that convening power. The White House uh, departments and agencies have an amazing ability to bring people together. So you can bring social media providers with those credible voices that Farrah talked about and hope that there's something good to come out of it. So credible voices know what the message is. Social media knows how to get the message out. I was in Sacramento uh, eight months ago, uh, and an imam, after we, we talked for a while, he raised his hand and said, Seamus, I'm going to do counter-ISIL messaging. And I said, that's great. Well, how are you going to do it? And he goes, I'm going to hold a phone, and I'm going to record a video, and I'm going to explain to them why they're wrong. I said, that's great, sir. I really appreciate that, that you're interested in this issue, but no one's going to watch it. No one's going to watch you with your video camera there. But if I can connect you with social media providers who know how to use uh, the space, who know how to connect your video with that if you type in Anwar Alaki, you're going to get that video that pops up there. There are small little pockets of things that we could do tomorrow to solve this problem that wouldn't cost a dime. Well, and that's exactly what I'm looking for, because all I've heard today is we need to throw more right. money at it. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to be in favor of that unless I see results. Ms. Pandit, you, you claim to be to, to have traveled to 80 different countries. I'm so impressed. I've been to two myself. And, and that's, that's one too many, because I like the one that I've spent most of the time in. Nevertheless, I want to hear in the minute and 10 seconds left that I have here, which is, for a committee like this, that's eternity. But nevertheless, I want to hear specific, specific, succinct programs that you have experienced overseas that you feel like could work here. We seeded, uh, thank you, uh, that we seeded several programs at the Department of State that have promise. Um, when I left the Department of State, I gave all my programs to outside entities so that they could bloom. One of them is at the U.S. Institute of Peace. It's called Generation Change. It has 30 chapters around the world of more than 600 young Muslims under the age of 30 who want to push back against extremist ideology. Why aren't we scaling that up? Another program that we seeded is called Viral Peace. It's teaching young kids online how to push back in their own voices and in their own 
own ways. It's what Seamus said. You can't do it in a very hard way. You need to do it from peer to peer. It has to be attractive to them. It needs to make sense. So um, Viral Peace is a program that l learns how to teach kids how to push back online. It's now living at Harvard University. I could go on, sir. There are things that we seeded in the United States government with U.S. taxpayer dollars that are living outside of government right now that can be scaled up. On the, on the question you asked about uh, efforts in other parts of the world, there are, there are hotlines for parents uh, that, that they can call to learn about things. This piece about mental health is critically important. We can copy those kinds of things here. There are narratives that have to do with culture uh, and the, uh, the, the pushback against a monolith of Islam that can come back to our country as well because the bad guys want to eradicate the diversity of Islam. And finally, I, I would be wrong not to say this to all of you. The ecosystem that has been growing for more than a, for 20 decades, 20, de 20 years, two decades, is, is the ecosystem that has allowed this stuff to grow. As Americans, we have to be clear about what's happening in mosques around the world and with textbooks that are being sent by our allies to, to citizens all over the world that is influencing the way these young kids think. That is part of it as well, sir. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your work and, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this bill because I believe that our intent is exactly what she's describing here. And I yield back.